SpaceX provides lift to the ISS, latest news on ESA Space Rider, issues with IN6, Starbase update, Cosmoleap does SpaceX, AVIC shows more details of his spacecraft, rocket launches this week. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space, and this is your Space Update. For many years now, due to atmospheric friction, the ISS orbit keeps decaying below the 410 km altitude. Now, this was corrected by either the Soyuz spacecraft or North of Grumman Cygnus spacecraft. Due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, NASA is less and less keen to depend on Soyuz to carry out these tasks. As for the Cygnus spacecraft, it has lost its ride with the Antares rocket for the moment also due to American sanctions on Russia responsible for providing the engines to the Antares rocket. Incidentally, Firefly is tasked to revamp the Antares with parts 100% made in America, expected to fly again in the second half of 2025. In the meantime, Cygnus is being launched by a Falcon 9 rocket. However, NASA has requested further redundancies and SpaceX came to the rescue with his Dragon capsule recently sent to the ISS. Indeed, this capsule was fitted with more fuel to allow reboosting the ISS orbit. The certification test took place on November 8th under close monitoring from SpaceX and NASA. The spacecraft Draco thrusters adjusted the station's orbit through a reboost of altitude by 0.1 km at apogee and 1.1 km at perigee, lasting approximately 12 minutes and 30 seconds. NASA stated that by testing the spacecraft's ability to provide reboost and eventually attitude control, NASA's International Space Station program will have multiple spacecraft available to provide these capabilities for the orbital complex. And that is what astronauts and cosmonauts do during reboosts. People have to entertain themselves. ESA launched some years ago a program called Space Rider aimed at providing a space laboratory to international customers. Indeed, the plan is to use the Avio Vega C from Kourou to send this unmanned spacecraft with a series of customers' experiments in microgravity for a period of up to two months and land back down to Earth with the results of such experiments. The Space Rider payload is about 1.2 cubic meter and up to 620 kg and expects to be reusable up to six times minimum with a refurbishing time taking up to six months. It would glide down to Earth and will use parachutes once in the Earth's atmosphere. The prime contractor is Thales Alenia in Italy for the main craft and Avio for the service module. Although ESA originally planned to have his maiden flight at the end of 2023, the latest plan is now in 2027, four years later. As most customers are expected to be European, ESA has worked with local European space agencies to secure landing sites for the space rider. Sardinia site in Italy was previously used in August this year to carry out some landing trials, and this week, however, ESA has added a second site in the Portuguese islands of Santa Maria in the Atlantic Ocean. We will have to be patient until we see more development on this project, but I will keep you updated. I am afraid I have further bad news regarding Ion 6. For those who have seen my episode about Ion 6 maiden flight in July 2024, you might be aware of what happened to the upper stage, which did not deorbit as planned. Although the first N upper stages delivered the payload to the right orbit and accurately, the second phase of the flight was testing the performance of the upper stage for reaching a second orbit and the orbiting as well. Now, ESA and Ion Space have since provided an update into the anomaly that took place. Engineers concluded that one temperature measurement exceeded a limit that prevented the stage's auxiliary power unit from starting up ahead of the planned burn 
and that a software change would correct that problem. Ariane Espace has just announced that the second flight of Ariane 6 rocket and its first commercial mission has slipped from December 24 towards the end of the first quarter in 2025. The mission in question is the CSO-3 reconnaissance satellite for the French military. Stéphane Israel, chief executive of Ariane Espace, has not explained whether the delay is related or not to the anomaly. He mentioned that the core and upper stages are still in their factories in France and Germany and will soon be transported by ship to the French Guiana. Joseph Aschbacher, director general of ESA, mentioned recently that he assured that Ariane 6 is on good track for the next launches, meaning that Ariane 6 is expected now to launch seven times in 2025. A short Starbase update now. At the production site, Starship number 31, the one to fly on flight test number 6 in the coming days, has now completed its thermal protection tile swap. What is interesting is the fact that SpaceX has removed a section of these tiles on the side of the ship and intend to let them bear. SpaceX has gone banana, with now a decal of a banana put on near the forward flaps. I like their sense of humor. In the Star Factory, parts are continuing to be manufactured as expected. And here is the hot stage ring for the booster number 13, the one to be used on flight test number 6. The first Starship version 2, that's Starship number 33, has had its cryogenic tank tested some weeks ago and is now getting its engine fitted in the mega bay. At the launch site, SpaceX staff is carrying on more updates on the launch mount number 1 and its tower. On the pad number 2, the launch mount is continuing assembly. Here is a render of how is the square mount looking. It contains lots more improvement compared to that of launch mount number one, but I will not enter into details today. The drawworks has been added to the tower number two. And finally, both boosters number 13 and Starship 31 have been transported to the launch site and stacked up in preparation for flight test number six, expected, it seems, on November 18th. Since SpaceX has caught his booster number 12 in midair with his Mechazilla arms, we now start seeing some interesting phenomena being published. Now, what you are watching is not SpaceX, but rather Cosmo Leap, a private Chinese space company showing their concept very similar, you may say. This week, we can even see some results with real hardware being tested. Can someone tell me what the Chinese name for this Mechazilla lookalike is? And that is not the end. I spared my viewers with lots more information of Chinese rockets which looked familiar up until we start seeing hardware to show for it. But I could not resist showing you a very familiar rocket. See for yourself, it's the Long March 9 rocket from CASC, or at least a reusable version of it. In previous episodes, I have mentioned that China's Manned Space Administration, or CMSA, in charge of Tiangong Space Station and contracting crewed and uncrewed missions to the station, has awarded AVIC with a station resupply mission. AVIC has proposed is how long one cargo space plane, a similar concept as the Dream Chaser from Sierra Space, as you could see on your screen. We recently received more rendering from AVIC and saw even a full-scale mock-up of the craft. Despite many things we see as ambitious from many space companies, this project is likely to see the light because number one, it has a contract awarded by CMSA and number two, AVIC is a reputable company which has delivered numerous unmanned vehicles in the past. And number three, it has other space companies supporting the project such as the Chinese Academy of Science for Space, or CAS Space, behind the Kinetica rockets and various rocket engines, such as the Legion 2 engines. November 9th, CSC launched a Long March 2C from China for his mission PSAT-2124. And on the same day, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from California for a Starlink mission Group 910. It was the 11th flight of the first stage which successfully landed on a drone ship. November 11th, 
CS Space launched his Kinetica 1 rocket from China for his rideshare mission. Later on that day, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from Florida for his mission Coriasat 6A. The first stage flew for the 23rd time and landed back to site. On the same day, SpaceX launched another Falcon 9 from Florida for the Starlink mission Group 669. The first stage flew for his 12th time and landed on the drone ship. November 13th, CSC launched a Long March 4B from China for his mission Heiyang 4A. November 14th, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from California for his Starlink mission Group 911. The first stage flew for his 8th time and landed on a drone ship. On the same day, SpaceX launched from Florida a Falcon 9 for his Starlink mission Group 668. The first stage flew for his 18th time and landed on a drone ship. In summary, from January 1st until November 14th, 2024, 215 rockets were launched successfully. Out of that, 133 were from an American company or institution and 54 from China. I leave you this week with this majestic picture of this dark nebula LDN 1355, 1357 and 1358, also known as the Helping Hand, spanning about 80 light years across and nearly 3000 light years away from us in the northern constellation of Cassiopeia. Now these are dusty mocular clouds. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space. See you at the next episode of Space News.